In this lecture, we'll show how to use calculus to find maxima and minima of functions. Let's let f of x be the function x times e to the negative x. Let's start by taking a look at the graph of the function. Let's use GeoGebra to graph f. We can do this simply by typing f into the input box. Let's change the color and make it bigger. Here we can see that the function goes up, reaches a maximum about right here, and then goes back down. Let's see how we can calculate where this maximum occurs. How can we find the point where f reaches its maximum? The solution is to find the critical points of f, i.e. the points where the derivative is zero, or undefined. How do we calculate the derivative f prime of x? f is x times e to the negative x. It's a product, so we should use the product rule. It's the derivative of x, which is 1, times e to the negative x, plus x times the derivative of e to the negative x. Do you remember how to differentiate e to the negative x? The derivative of e to the negative x is just minus 1 and then the function itself, e to the negative x. So we have to multiply by minus e to the negative x. Therefore, f prime of x, if we factor out the 1 and the negative x, is 1 minus x times e to the negative x. So when is f prime of x equal to 0? e to the negative x can never be 0, so the only possibility is that 1 minus x is equal to 0. In other words, when x equals 1. So x equals 1 is a critical point, and a critical point is a potential maximum or minimum. How can we tell if x equals 1 is a maximum, a minimum, or neither? Let's look at the derivative near x equals 1. Well, here's the derivative. Let's emphasize that. If x is less than 1, then 1 minus x is positive, and it's multiplied by e to the negative x, which is positive. So this means that f prime is positive. On the other hand, if x is greater than 1, then 1 minus x is negative, and so f prime of x is negative. So f is increasing to the left, and f is decreasing to the right. We can summarize this by a diagram. If we know the function is increasing up to 1 and decreasing afterward, then it must be going up, stopping here and coming back down, so we can conclude that right at x equals 1, we have a local maximum. Let's take a look at the graph of f again. In GeoGebra, we can easily plot the derivative by just typing derivative of f. Here it calculates the derivative. It's the same as the function we came up with, although it's written in a different form. Let's make it green. Here we can see that the derivative is positive up until the point x equals 1 and then becomes negative. The point where the derivative switches from being positive to negative is exactly where the maximum of f is. The maximum occurs when x is 1. So the point is at 1, f of 1. So here is our local maximum. Let's try another function. Let's let g of z equal z minus 2, the whole quantity squared. To find the maxima or minima of g, we need to calculate the critical points, i.e. we need to calculate the derivative. How do we calculate the derivative of g? z is the composition of two functions. First we subtract 2, and then we square. So therefore we have to use the chain rule. 
we could do this. We could let h of u equal u squared and k of z equal z minus 2. Then g of z is h of k of z. It's easy to calculate the derivative of the component functions h and k. h prime of u is 2u. k prime of z is 1. So therefore, using the chain rule, g prime of z is h prime of k of z times k prime of z. Well, this is equal to h prime, k of z is z minus 2. So h prime of z minus 2. k prime of z is just 1. And now we need to plug in u equals z minus 2 into the formula for h prime. So we get 2 times z minus 2. Now it's simple to calculate the critical points. g prime of z equals 0 if and only if z equals 2. We have one critical point. If we're to the left of the critical point, and if z is less than 2, what is the sign of g prime of z? Well, if z is less than 2, this factor is negative, so g prime of z is negative. On the other hand, if we're to the right, if z is greater than 2, then g prime of z is positive. So g is first decreasing and then increasing. And right here at the point z equals 2, we must have a local minimum. If you were to plot g of z, you would get a parabola like this. If you were to plot the derivative, it would be a line. It would look like this, where right here is the z-axis. So that indeed the derivative is negative up to the point z equals 2 and then becomes positive. Let's try one more example. Let's let h of t equal t minus t cubed. To find the critical points, let's calculate the derivative dh dt. This is just 1 minus 3 times t squared. Set that equal to 0. This means 3 times t squared is equal to 1, or t squared is equal to 1 third. Therefore, t is equal to plus or minus the square root of one-third. The function has two critical points, one at the square root of one-third and another at the negative the square root of one-third. This derivative, 1 minus 3t squared, is positive for t between negative square root of one-third and square root of one-third. So therefore, h is increasing in this interval. The derivative is negative. If d is less than negative the square root of one-third, or if t is greater than the square root of one-third. So h is decreasing in those intervals. Around t equals negative square root of one-third, h is first decreasing and then increasing. So it's to look like this. So t equals negative square root of one-third is a minimum. Around positive square root of one-third, h is first increasing and then decreasing, so therefore square root of one-third is a maximum. Just at looking at the intervals where the derivative is positive or negative, 
we can determine the local minima and maxima of a function.